Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Mission Impossible movie thoughts. So, I'm gonna try to not make too many disrespectful Tom Cruise jokes because I, if I keep going I might end up on his radar and he's lost with happy. But I do think that, you know, the one could argue that in the sequels the, you know, facial, facial mask does become a bit overused, you know, but I do think in this one, you know, at least at times, it really works how Tom Cruise is wearing the skin of other people. I mean, masks, mask. He's, he's not a serial killer cannibal. Moving on, right after he, you know, has broken into the impenetrable vault of the IMF headquarters, man, I wish they'd just call them the CIA anyway, Black Ops CIA, anyway, moving on. Right after, you know, he opens the Bible and, you know, sees the imprinted address of, you know, the hotel and realizes that Phelps is still alive and is obviously Job. A lot of things has to be running through his mind at that exact moment, but I would think Prime, at the very, at the very front of his cerebral cortex, would be... Why didn't I open to the first page before breaking into the impenetrable vault? He didn't really have to do that, you know, the whole point of doing that was to find out who Job was, and then afterwards, open the book, and that's it, you know. He should have just asked Stickle to... Stickle? Not Stickle, the other guy, Krieger, to just knock over the Bible before that, you know. Just, that, that's... I think that is how every... You know, whenever you have a problem, that should be the approach. Knock over a Bible. Maybe it won't solve anything, but you'll feel better. And I'll refrain from making any jokes about how, you know, Tom might feel about all the opening of Bibles in this movie now that he's a Scientologist. The... One thing that I do somewhat dislike about this movie is the choice of the identity for the villain. Not that it turns out to be Ethan's mentor, but that Ethan's mentor is Phelps. I have not watched the original show basically at all. I've seen a few scenes when I was younger. So I don't know that much, but I have gathered that Phelps was one of the protagonists of that show. Excuse me. Which does kind of make him being the villain this a bit of a middle finger to the fans of the show. Which is a little... Yeah, offensive seeing that if it wasn't for the show the movie might not exist you know I'm not saying that they should at all you know religiously adapt stuff from it I'm just saying they should have given him another name you know heck if it had to be someone from the original show you know just a lesser known character at least or you know maybe have the, you know, have, have it look like it's a fellow IMF agent, and then that person turns out to be secretly a recurring villain from that show, and I don't even know if they had recurring villains, but, you know. But yeah, you know, other than that, you know, this is exactly how it should be, you know, it's, it's a proper spy thriller. You know, not big action sequences. You know, some of the big, you know, sequences with, you know, stuff that is really exciting, it doesn't actually involve a lot of gunfire or car chases 
or stuff like that. You know, again, the closest that we really get to an action scene is the climax, which I'll get to. But you know, other than that, you know, Ethan has to run away from this restaurant, and he doesn't pull a gun. He doesn't, you know, engage in some or even or use like gadgets or something. He just uses, you know, the gun and blows up the, you know, fish tank. Right after that scene, my girlfriend remarked, those poor fish. She's, she's a very sweet creature. Anyway, the, you know, and yeah, the, the stick of gum thing, great how they bring that back there at the end, you know, with, because again, it's, it's this kind of, simple little thing, you know, it's not, and it's also, you know, the fireball explosion is perhaps excessive, but, you know, they needed some way to take out the chopper, now that he got to it, and, you know, a gun wouldn't necessarily really have helped, I'm not sure if you can shoot through the glass of a chopper, but yeah. The I like how the deaths are somewhat gruesome without being all that graphic, really. In, you know, if that makes sense, that you know Phelps dies by being ground into the the train tracks. But you don't see it in that much detail. You just realize that, that that's what's going on. And Charlie Sheen's less known but more talented brother, I believe that's him. I, you know, it's one of those from the, you know, the Sheens. Yeah, they. They have a lot of babies, don't they? It's one of them. He dies by, you know, being ground up against the bottom. You know, it's not even just that he... <laughs> just that he gets smushed between two flat surfaces. Oh no! They get these... I didn't even know elevators had spikes of death. But apparently they do. You know, maybe Phelps added those for just that personal touch. I don't know. But yeah, both times you really don't see it that much, you know. The climax with, you know, which again brings back something that we've seen before, you know. Climbing atop a speeding train using those magnety thingies, you know, that Ethan used to climb vertically in a, you know air vent, I think. Yeah, that... It wasn't completely credible, like, most of the, st you know, most of the stuff in the film is pretty credible, but it worked, and it was this really tense, you know, sequence, and... Yeah, it was... And, you know, with the the chopper and Ethan locking that to the front of the train and then the opposing train comes by and the whole thing, you know. I like how Krieger from pretty early on is established as a bit of a loose cannon, you know. Ethan can't completely trust him. You know, he he has to tell him zero body count, you know. And the response is, of course, we'll see. And he's right, because he does kill a rat. And that is, again, this brilliant little sequence, because, you know, you might not really think about it, or at least consciously, but... 
you don't see it, but you do realize he killed that rat in a fraction of a second. The time it took him to kill that rat was the time it took him to let go of the rope and grab it again before Hunt hit the ground. That was it, you know, the... That is badass, you know, that really tells you this guy is an ex-spy. This guy can kill in a matter of seconds. He's in a vent. He is stuck in this tiny little claustrophobic space. It's a rat. It's a tiny thing. It's fast. And that's it, you know. He can just do it just like that, you know. And again, this is not something we need to necessarily see. This is not something that, you know, because in your mind, you know, we, we put it together. We, you know, it's not even, there's not even a line. So you killed that rat, huh? You know, it just, we piece it together and then our mind creates the image of badassery. And, you know, I, I am of the mind that the audience's imagination will conjure up something better than, you know, what the filmmakers can think of to something like that. You know... The... I like that Hunt is a kind of, you know, he has to actually risk himself several times just to get this done. I mean, almost immediately, you know, Max could have killed him. You know, he could have just... That could have been the end of it right there. You know, he's tied to a chair, and... Yeah, you know, he's really trusting that they're going to, you know want him to take care of it, and that, you know, it could have gone bad if they hadn't been cautious enough, if Max and, you know, her, you know, which, as it turns out in the end, they, they aren't always careful enough. I like the very brief and just almost a hint of just how they deal with it, how they keep this stuff safe, it's secret, you know, from everyone. That, you know, oh, so this helicopter lost control and, you know, rammed into a speeding train, no one was hurt but the pilot, you know. So that's it, that's all that went on in that whole thing, you know. Because that's, you know, what they couldn't, well, I guess they have to make up some story for the government agents on the train as well. But whatever, you know. I like the detail about, you know, Hunt, you know, being such a good spy that he realizes that there is another IMF team at the embassy, you know, and they're at the beginning that, you know, and that the whole thing, excuse me, you know, he was willing to risk himself for the knock list, and then he finds out that it was a fake, and that the whole thing was a mole hunt. So, you know, really, they had actually tricked Phelps, which is also, of course, why he returns. That's, you know, it's again, it's a twist that he, you know, that it was him, and it's a twist that he returns to Ethan, but it actually makes sense. He realized that what he gave Max was not, a, you know, a proper copy, and he, you know, he gets back in contact with Ethan. He, yeah, I guess by then he actually does know that Ethan has the thing, because, you know, she was the the chick who ends up dead. <laughs> One of them. The last chick to be shot in the film. The last chick to die in the film. I suck at names. She, 
you know, she's been telling him, Phelps, about what Ethan's been doing. So, hey, maybe he actually realized that it was a mole hunt and, you know, and he was hoping that Ethan would actually be the kind of guy to, so, which I guess he would know because he's his mentor. But yeah, you know, it really smartly plotted. And I like that it, it turns out she he couldn't trust her, you know, Ethan, when it's actually, you know, when we first see her, we don't trust her and he doesn't trust her. And then she repeats, you know, but don't you remember we were supposed to meet back here at this exact time? It's this exact time. And, yeah, you know, he kind of... So, yeah, okay, I guess, you're right, you're right, I've been paranoid, it's, you know, something that happens in this land war. And then later we find out, nope, she was actually, you know, and that Krieger couldn't be trusted either. And Luther ends up, the, you know, the only person he really trusts there. That was really nice, you know, trust with the discs, disc and all. And that the mental poker he, you know, plays with Krieger... He was actually bluffing. You know, Krieger did have the knock list. That is just fantastic. That, you know, that was the one way he he did that, you know, in, in case the, you know, maybe he had that extra disc in case he needed to trick the other person into throwing the disc. I guess it's a good thing he didn't break the disc. And, you know, he just... Yeah. The opening sequence demands mentioning. I was not going to, you know, give this stuff away in the review because I really don't want anyone to, you know, miss the fantastic opening. The very first thing we see is someone being watched. You know, there's a situation, and it's the kind of situation, if it just opened on these two people talking, and one of them asking the other for help, you might think in the back of your mind, this is a spy film, maybe they're being watched. The very first thing you see is that, you know, they are being watched in that situation. You know, that's the very first thing you learn from the film. A couple of minutes later, you realize that the person there, you know, watching this scene is actually very close by. You know, because again, it's not, it's not, you know, nothing big is made of it. It's just, you see in the background, there's a woman, she's, you know, dripping something into, and she walks out and then you see on the monitor that she walks in and you know there's something in that that's for the you know and that's it and then a minute or two later you realize the whole thing was a set you know it when the russian guy says i don't even know how i got here he's not kidding he doesn't know because he didn't get there you know he is in a controlled location controlled by the imf you know, and just after that, you know, you realize that not only was the Russian with the mustache working for the IMF, that wasn't even him, you know, that was Ethan Hunt wearing a face mask. That was just, yeah, you know, that really sets the tone. You know, that is three bits of information right off the bat that just immediately set the tone and, you know, let's say at least two twists on, you know, two things that you did not expect at the beginning of the scene, you know. At the beginning of the scene, you don't even know necessarily that the guy in the, mus the, guy in the mustache is, you know, working for the IMF. You you know, for all you know, they're both, they're watching both of them, you know, and then, you know, the woman wakes up, and it's like, 
did we get him? We got him, you know, and just perfectly sets the tone and, you know, leads into the opening credits and the fantastic theme song. The very ending with Ethan on the plane does leave the door open for sequels, definitely, with, you know, it's the same situation as the, you know, the Phelps situation, although I do have to wonder if they really think it's safe to use that exact same way of informing about, you know, the, of delivering briefings, but, you know, yeah. It is great that, you know, we don't see if he takes it or not, if, you know, but, yeah. I'll get to the sequels in the next couple of days. I suppose that is pretty much everything I really wanted to say. Briefly on Hunt, I like that we have this character who is, you know, he's not James Bond. He is not that mindlessly dedicated to, you know, the people he's working for. You know, you could almost compare this to something like the Bourne Identity or the Bourne films in general, and the new trilogy at least, with the you know, the, the agent that doesn't necessarily trust his employer, excuse me, and that isn't necessarily, excuse me, treated entirely well by his employer. You know, they actually, excuse me, when they believe that he is the mole, after he sort of fingers himself for that, get your mind out of the gutter, he, you know, they actually threaten his family. Which is actually kind of a mafia thing to do, I guess. You know, and, you know, it's not James Bondy, oh, I'll always be working for you kind of thing. The government is always right. It is that kind of thing of do you really trust, you know, th this sort of thing could be turned against you. And I also think that that's a nice way to sort of do, whenever an already established franchise, especially like a series or something, is turned into a movie, they try to take some of the concept and sort of play around with it or turn it on its head to make it interesting, you know, for the, which I guess was also part of why Phelps had to be the bad guy, which I still don't agree with, but I do think that having our lead be disavowed from very early on in the film was a great way to do that. And I also think that if any sequels should indeed have been made, they should only have been made if they were actually interesting ideas to explore, you know, because I do think that this film is a great idea. You know, the the whole spy thing, in and of itself, would have made for a great movie. But to take that, you know, that already made for a show that I hear is great. So, you know, taking that and giving it that extra twist to it and adding that extra flavor is by saying, well, what if he is working without backup? What if he is, you know, being hunted down by his own agency? What if he is disavowed from very early on and he has to prove his innocence? You know, and that was actually something I also wanted to mention. At first, he is willing to risk himself for the knock list. Later on, he risks the knock list to save himself. You know, that's a nice, interesting kind of, you know, because it is kind of a betrayal that he was not aware that it was a mole hunt, you know, and it's it's an understandable betrayal, but it is a betrayal nonetheless. You know, he trusted them, and they clearly did not trust him, and continued to not trust him, 
you know. But that is a great, and it's also just to have spies going up against each other, you know. That's also some of the, you know, that's part of why the climax works, you know, the one time that Hunt is really outsmarted, it's by his mentor, you know, there at the end, Phelps is suddenly behind him with a gun, you know, you have that, kind of, that's the only time he is in a situation that he can't, at least immediately handle, you know, he does, you know, throw a wrench into the machinery with the, you know, the glasses and you know, the camera kind of thing, but yeah, you know he's he's a spy on the on the run and using what he's been taught to hide from them and to actually work against them, you know, temporarily. That was and and just the. You know, something like the sequence where he hangs up the phone with three seconds left, you know, before they know exactly where he is, just letting them know. You know, it's it's that sort of thing where, you know, he intentionally made he made sure that they knew where in the world Carmen San Diego was, but not what exact spot, you know, and you don't realize. You're sitting there, you know, practically yelling at the screen, hang up, hang up, they're gonna trace the line. And suddenly he just hangs, you know, suddenly they cut to, you know, the other angle, and you see that he's been looking at the clock. And, you know, he hangs up with those three seconds left to go, and it's just, it's this brilliant thing of, you know, he knows what he's doing. And that's also something you see throughout the movie. These people know what they're doing. We, the audience, don't know exactly what they're doing, uh, at least all the time, but, you know, they have a plan, and they've thought this through, and they've done, you know, stuff like this before, not quite on the scale, but, you know. I also really like Ving Rhames' performance, and I... I get wanting to see more of him, and Tom Cruise does make a great action star, so I get why they did that with the sequels, you know, with him in the lead and all, I just, I wish the sequels had been a different series instead of this, I think if there should have been sequels to this, it should have been in the same vein, instead of just going to, you know, action blockbusters, we have enough of those, and again, if it should have been that, just call it something else. Leave some stuff for just straight spy thriller, you know. But, but yeah, I also, if this had been the only time we'd seen Ving Rhames perform this character, I do think that, you know, it would have been satisfying. You know, we want to see more of him after this movie, but you know, it's not like he's a kind of character where, I don't know, you feel like you have to see more of him. You know, that it's, you know, that he wasn't used enough in this movie. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.